What's up guys, Saxon with Good Time Gaming, and today we're going to be taking a look at the redesigned Fugitive Tree. And we're going to talk about some of the new skills in there, some of the old skills, where the old skills are at, and just kind of give you guys a feel for what all is in Fugitive now and what you can do with it, compared to what we used to be able to do with it. And trust me, there's been a lot of changes with Update 100. So without further ado, let's dive right in and see what we find. First off, you'll notice right away that things look obviously quite a bit different. Um, if you're just now getting into update 100 or you're coming back to the game just recently and this is the first video you've seen, um, all the old skill trees have been gutted and replaced by new skill trees and kind of new flow in the skill charts. Some people have a really big issue with it. Personally, I think it's actually pretty good for the most part. But um, yeah, this is what the Fugitive Tree looks like now. So we're going to start with the Gunslinger. In tier 1, we start with Equilibrium. For one point, you can decrease the time it takes to draw and holster pistols by 80%. If you ace it, then you gain 8 weapon accuracy with all pistols. Now obviously if you want to proceed into the ranks of Gunslinger, you're going to have to get the first rank for sure, so that's you know not a problem at all. When it comes to acing it, there's a lot of other ways to get weapon accuracy, so I wouldn't really necessarily say this is the only place you can get it at. A lot of the pistols are also fairly accurate to begin with, so just kind of be aware of that, that you may not need the weapon accuracy for acing it. In tier 2, we start with Gun Nut. The basic version of this will make it so that your pistol magazine sizes are increased by 5 bullets. If you ace it, then you gain a 50% increased rate of fire with your pistols. So the basic version, obviously pretty good. 5 more bullets in your magazines, fantastic. The ace version, um, you're going to have to be clicking pretty quickly to take advantage of that 50% increased rate of fire. Um, most people probably won't be able to take advantage of it because they just won't click enough. And most situations, it's not really beneficial to sit there and like spam left click anyways. So be kind of aware of that. For me, the ace version is definitely a pass, but I do like the basic version of this, absolutely. Also in tier 2, we have Akimbo. Now it's important to note that you do not actually need the Akimbo perk to use Akimbo weapons. Just makes it so they're a little bit, um, a little bit better to use, a little bit easier. The basic version of Akimbo will make it so that your Akimbo weapon stability penalty is reduced by 8. So just for using Akimbo weapons, you suffer a penalty to your stability. This is going to reduce that by 8. By acing it, your Akimbo weapon stability penalty is reduced by an additional 8 points, and they also have 15% increased ammo capacity, so you can carry a little bit more ammo with you. Um, the Akimbo weapons are kind of like notorious for being kind of low on ammo, and with the way they've kind of updated things here in this, um, in this uh, update to the skill tree, a lot of the weapons don't really pick up as much ammo as they used to, so you're kind of like running out of ammo a little bit easier than what you used to. So this will kind of help you at least have a little more ammo to buffer against that, so you can kind of switch between your weapons to kind of balance things out, or go a little bit longer before you really need to use the ammo bag. So. As far as if you really need it to use Akimbo weapons, eh, not really. There's a lot of other ways to get stability, so if you're looking for stability gains, you can find it in other areas and other trees, but 50% increased ammo capacity isn't actually that terrible. So it is an option, it's an easy way to get some extra stability on your Akimbo weapons and some extra ammo capacity. Going into tier 3, we have one-handed talent. The base version of this will make it so that all pistol damage are increased by 5 points. If you ace it, then you'll get an additional 10 damage on top of that. So this will give you the old 15 uh, points of damage that you used to have with Gunslinger, which was in Mastermind. So 15 points if you ace everything here. Going over to the right, we have Desperado. Each successful pistol hit gives you a 10% increased accuracy bonus for 10 seconds and can stack 4 times. If you ace it, you reload all pistols 50% faster. Now it's important to note here that unlike a lot of the other skills in the new update. Um, a lot of those skills require you to hit headshots. This one doesn't. You just have to have a successful pistol hit and you get 10% increased accuracy for 10 seconds and it can stack up to 40%. That's a huge amount of accuracy and that also kind of brings me back to what I said earlier about not really needing to get equilibrium and ace it because 8 weapon accuracy with your pistols is nothing compared to what you're going to get with Desperado once you start actually shooting people with it. This is where you're going to get a lot of your accuracy from if you want to actually use pistols. So I actually like this one, um, the 50% faster reload is something I'm really used to. I've been playing Mastermind with that for almost three years now. So I kind of am like, very used to that and I need that. So I usually go ahead and ace that one if I like it. And also ace one hand talent. Now at the very top of the Gunslinger tree we have Trigger Happy. For every hit with a pistol you gain a 20% damage boost that lasts for two seconds. Stacks up to four times. 
you ace it, it increases damage boost duration to 10 seconds. So again, this one is like Desperado in that you don't have to have headshots to get it. Um, just regular body shots or wherever will just work fine. I haven't actually used Trigger Happy at all because for most situations in the game, um, you can just one-shot most um, enemies. Like playing on um, Death Wish, I can one-shot the um, Death Wish cops with a Deagle, no problem. So I don't really need the extra damage, it's just kind of excessive and not really necessary. It's a lot of points to spend too. Um, if you're trying to use like a lower damage pistol, or you're maybe trying to do like some Akimbo um, Shimano compact, compact or something like that, that kind of have lower damage anyways, you might want to invest in this, but it's a lot of points to spend, and if you're using some powerful weapons, you're not going to really take much advantage of it anyways, because things are just going to die. You know, they die without it, and they die with it, so what's the point, right? Next up in Fugitive, we have the Revenant tree. So this is kind of a weird tree. Um, it's one that I think is kind of worthless, unless you're just bad at the game, but it is here, so we're going to go ahead and talk about it. So first rank of Revenant is 9 lives. You gain a 50% increase to your bleed out health, so you have 50% more damage you can take when you're laying on the ground. The Ace version will make it so that you can get down one extra time before going into custody, so that would be a total of 4, because normally it's um, 3 times you have to use a dock bag or you're done to get one extra shot. Um, again, this is just kind of like planning for failure and assuming that you're going to fail and fuck up, so I don't really like skills like that. And this is kind of what the Revenant tree is all about. Next up in tier 2 we have Running From Death. You reload and swap weapons 100% faster for 10 seconds after being revived. If you ace it, you move 30% faster for 10 seconds after being revived. Again, kind of the same thing. You're getting revived, you're getting picked up off the ground. If you're on the ground, clearly you or someone else was fucked up. So you're taking points for something on the assumption that you're going to be using them because you're going to be on the ground all the time. Not a good way to play. Next to that we have Up You Go. You take 30% less damage for 10 seconds after being revived, and if you ace it, you gain 15% of your maximum health after being revived. So the first part is pretty... Uh, I mean, if it was part of Painkillers where like the person reviving you is putting this on you, that might be a little bit better. But again, this one is only for you, and it's again only useful if you're getting off the ground after you've been put on the ground by a cop. Um, the second part, the ace part's not that bad actually. 15% more health from getting revived, so I mean, that's not really a bad thing, but probably not worth 4 points by any means. In tier 3 we have Swan Song. So you guys are probably familiar with this one. It's basically the same as what it was before. Um, instead of going down instantly after you lose all your health, you get to keep on fighting for 3 seconds with a 60% movement penalty. And if you ace it, you can increase that duration by 6 seconds and ammo will not be depleted while the buff is active. So you're going to sit there and just keep on firing and firing and firing until you finally go down. Honestly, in my opinion, this is probably the only really good skill in Revenant. Um, it's again not one that I like to use on most builds because you're kind of assuming and kind of planning for dying and planning that you're going to get knocked down. So I don't like to really plan to fail, I don't like to really set myself up to fail, so I'm not really a big fan of the skill. But it's not a bad skill by any means. Next up we have Feign Death. So the basic version of this is that whenever you get downed, you have a 15% chance to instantly get revived. If you ace it, the chance to instantly get revived is increased by an additional 30%. Um, again, you could spend a total of 9 points here, just so that whenever your ass gets laid out on the ground, you might get back up instantly. And that can really be a bad thing in a lot of situations, because if you play Death Wish at all, or if you play this game for any amount of time, you've probably been revived by someone with Inspire like through a wall and then gotten shot in the face and put right back down because you're surrounded by cops. You know, sometimes you need your friends to come and help you out and clear some stuff out before it's safe to get you up. And with this, you're kind of like putting yourself in that situation yourself. Not a good look. I can really see this skill though being beneficial if you're playing with bots or if you're planning on playing solo. Um, it definitely would be very beneficial in those situations because it will give you a second chance at you know, keeping on fighting if you do go down. So I can see it for solo play or offline play, but other than that, eh, not really. And last but not least, at the very top we have Messiah. So this used to be called Pistol Messiah. It used to be only triggered with pistols, and it used to be in Mastermind. So my how the chimes have changed. The basic version of this will make it so that while in bleed out, you can revive yourself if you kill an enemy. You have only one charge. Now, if you ace it, your Messiah charge is replenished whenever you use a doctor bag. Now, I mentioned this in my Mastermind video, and I'll mention it again here. Notice it says when you use a doctor bag, so you have to use the full doctor bag and not a kit to get your one charge back. 
You're spending a total of four points to get the charge and another eight points to be able to get it every time you use a doctor bag. A lot of points to spend for again something that is just basically you bring in with the assumption that you're gonna fuck up and you're gonna get put down. I wouldn't go anywhere near this skill at this point. You know, before I like to kind of use it sometimes if I played with pubs because pubs are unpredictable and I generally know that if I'm playing with random people that I don't know, as long as I'm alive, things are going to be okay and we're going to get through it. So I'd sometimes bring Pistol Messiah on certain builds. Now that it's called Messiah and that you get one charge and you only get it back if uh, you use a doctor bag, it's just utterly worthless and trash at this point. If you can try and convince me that it is not terrible, then by all means go ahead, but I don't see the purpose here. Again, maybe unless you're doing solo play or you're playing with only bots and offline. I'm not sure where else you would use it besides that. Alright, and last but not least in the Fugitive Tree, we have Brawler. In the first tier, we have Martial Arts. Got like a little nice fighter icon there, I like that. So the basic version, you take 50% less damage from all melee attacks because of training. Alright then. Thanks for that clarification. If you ace it, you're 50% more likely to knock down enemies with a melee strike. Pretty self-explanatory. Tier 2, we have Bloodthirst. Every kill you get will increase your next melee attack damage by 100% up to a maximum of 300%. This effect gets reset when striking an enemy with a melee attack. If you ace it, whenever you kill an enemy with a melee attack, you will gain 50% increase in reload speed for 10 seconds. So basically if you're shooting people, you can stack up to 3 times this buff that's going to give you a shitload extra damage on your next melee swing. And then whenever you do kill an enemy with a melee swing, you get 50% increase in your reload speed for 10 seconds thereafter. Next up we have Pumping Iron. Um, for people that might remember, this was the Enforcer tree before this. Um, the basic version will make it so that your melee attacks against non-special enemies do 50% more damage. The ace version will make it so that your melee attacks against special enemies do 50% more damage. So basically ace it out and you'll do 50% more damage across the board to everything. If you're going for a melee build, then this is what you're going to want to get. Next up we have Counter-Strike. When charging your melee weapon, you will counterattack enemies that try to strike you, knocking them down. The knockdown does not deal any damage. If you ace it, you gain the ability to counter cloaker attacks and their kicks. So, using melee skills, if you want to go for a melee build, this is probably worth bringing just so that you can actually get in close and not get punched in the face, because as we all know in this game, melee attacks from enemies do a lot of damage to us. The ability to knock back cloakers is also helpful, um, probably not really worth all those extra points, but it's an option there, and if you really want to go up to a cloaker and melee then, well you can now do that with a little bit more, um, a little bit more safety in doing so. Next up we have Berserker. For those of y'all that might remember, Berserker used to be in the Enforcer tree. It's now here. The lower your health is, the more damage you do. When your health is above 50%, you will do up to 250% more melee and saw damage. If you ace it, then you will also 100% more damage with ranged weapons as well. Not really a whole lot to explain there. It's an old skill. It's been around for a while. Use that with the Berserker build. If you want to do a melee Berserker build, then you know obviously you're going to take that as well. Um, once you actually enter Berserker state to get within that threshold of um, health damage, then any regeneration effects thereafter will be negated, so they won't actually work. So you won't have to worry about recovering enough health to where it goes over the threshold, and then you're like, well, shit, now I don't have Berserker again, so I gotta bring my health back down and try it again. And last but not least, we have Frenzy. The basic version of this will make it so that you only get 30% of your maximum health and cannot heal above it but you take 30% less health damage and healing received is reduced by 75%. If you ace it, health damage taken is now reduced by 60% and healing received is reduced by 50%. Now it's really worth noting here that the damage reduction only applies to your health, right? So with that 30% sliver of health you have, you'll take 60% less damage in that little sliver of health. So if your armor breaks when you're doing melee combat, then you'll have a little bit more of an opportunity to stay alive there. But the cost of that is that you are not going to be able to heal as quickly. So if somebody's using Gambler, or for some reason you have Muscle or something on that is making you regenerate health, then you're not going to get as much health back. It's going to take longer to bring your health back up. I've been trying out Berserker builds, and I haven't really been taking this skill, and I haven't really needed to. I don't really feel like it's that important. You can spend your points elsewhere. Some people might like this skill, but I really don't see the need to take it with my Berserker builds. You should never really be in health damage range anyways, so if you're playing smart and you're moving good and you have good movement, you're taking shit out, health damage should not be a problem. You should be able to, you know, weave in and out, take some body shots in your armor, 
kill shit, get your armor back, and then be safe. You shouldn't be worrying about taking health damage. So now that we've kind of gone through the skills that are now in Fugitive, we're going to go take a look at some of the other trees and see kind of where the old skills that used to be in Fugitive have now ended up. Now, you notice that there weren't really any deployables in Fugitive. That's because they've been moved over here to Mastermind under the Medic tree. So if you're wanting to get your old little cupcakes back, aka the uh, first aid kits, they are now over here in the Mastermind tree under the Medic section. And they're basically still the same. Um, the only really big difference is that the Ace version of Quick Fix will make it so that your first aid kits, um, or a doctor bag if you want to use those, make it so that your um, allies take 15% less damage for two minutes after they take one. As far as uppers goes, so uppers has seen a nice little addition to it. Um, if you decide to ace uppers and you put a first aid kit on the ground, anyone who is within a five meter radius of that kit whenever they take fatal damage will instead be healed and it cannot occur more than once every 20 seconds. So if you're trying to hold down a corridor or something like that, and you drop one of these kits on the ground, you're going boom, 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 shooting shit in the face, and suddenly, you know, Skulldozer walks around the corner and, like, blows your shit away, but then you kill him. Well, guess what? Even though you would have went to fatal damage and your ass would have got laid out thanks to that kit on the ground, you're still fighting. If you're looking for the old skills that used to add to um, your armor for your ballistic vest, then you need to look no further than Enforcer under the tank section. Here in Tier 2 of tank, um, Die Hard, the ace version of Die Hard will increase the armor of all ballistic vests by 20, so that's your old um, thick skin ability right there. And also, you might remember Bullseye, that is in tier 3 now. Um, the basic version allows you to generate 5 armor for each successful headshot, and it cannot occur more than once every 20 seconds. If you ace it, then you actually quadruple that and you regenerate 20 armor for each successful headshot. The ace version of this is actually pretty powerful, I use it on a lot of my builds. Um, it's very strong and I like it a lot. So if you're looking for that skill, it's right here and it's pretty good. Alright, a lot of our old fugitive skills have been put into Ghost. So let's just start over here with um, Artful Dodger. So if you'll notice here on um, the first tier of Artful Dodger, if you ace it, you get a 10% increased chance to dodge while sprinting, and you also have 15% chance to dodge while ziplining. These used to be over in Fugitive. In Tier 2, we have Parkour. You gain 10% additional movement speed and 20% increased speed while climbing ladders. That also used to be over in Fugitive. And last but not least, at the very top, we have good old Sneaky Bastard, and it's still functionally the same as it was before. Um, basic version, you gain one dodge for every three points of concealment under 35, up to 10%, and then of course, if you ace it, then you make it so that it's a one-to-one -one conversion there for dodge. So, if you're looking for Low Blow, our old um, Critical Strike friend, then you need to look no further than Silent Killer in the Ghost Tree. It is now in tier 3, and it's basically the same as it was before, once again. Um, you gain 3% critical hit chance for every 3 points of concealment under 35, up to 30%. And if you decide to ace it, then it is 3% um, critical hit chance for every 1 point of concealment under 35, up to 30%. And of course, last but not least, we have over here in Shinobi some of our old stealth skills. If you guys remember, I believe it was Sixth Sense in um, Fugitive that used to be able to like, let us do this, but the Ace version of Chameleon will allow you to pick up items while in casing mode. In Tier 2, we have Cleaner. So, um, Cleaner was the part of Ghost before, but we had um, extra skills over on our Fugitive tree that allowed us to get more body bags. You'll see here that in Cleaner under um, Ghost, this is where you're going to get your extra body bag capacity from. Basic version adds one additional body bag to your inventory. It also increases your body bag inventory space to three, so up from two. And then if you ace Cleaner in Ghost, you gain the ability to place two body bag cases. So that's where your body bag case went to. It's over in Ghost. And of course we have Sixth Sense, but it's looking a little bit different nowadays. The basic version of this will allow you to automatically mark enemies within a 10 meter radius around you after standing still for three and a half seconds while in stealth. And then if you ace that bad boy, you gain access to all insider assets, cleaning costs after killing a civilian is reduced by 75%. I think it's kind of curious that they kept um, the cleaner reduction in there because it's almost like they encourage you to kill civilians because pretty much anybody who runs a stealth build is going to want to get um, Sixth Sense and ace it out. So I think that's kind of weird. So yeah, there you have it guys. Um, that is Fugitive in a nutshell. Um, as far as like my overall thoughts on Fugitive now, I kind of feel like it's just this weird little niche um, build section. I mean, whenever Fugitive first came out, it was kind of billed as like a jack of all trades, master of none. And I feel like with the recent um, update, it's that more than ever. Um, there's a lot of skills in Fugitive that are just kind of like, eh, they're okay. And there's a couple that are really good, 
and they work really well, but the majority of them I feel like are fairly forgettable and skippable. I mean, the entire Revenant tree here is basically built on the assumption that, hey, you might suck at the game, or you might play really stupid and get fucked up a lot, take some of these skills. I mean, that's basically what that tree is about. Um, it's nice to see the melee skills in this game getting kind of their own section, but I mean, when's the last time that you saw anybody using a melee build? I mean, I have one that I put up that I enjoy using, but I have never seen another person in this game using a melee build, and I have over a thousand hours in it. I've been playing for almost three years. I've never seen another person running a melee build. So it's kind of a niche build again. Maybe with Brawler having its own thing here and there being these dedicated uh, melee skills grouped together, maybe more people will do that. It will become like a little meta. But I have my suspicions probably not. Because even the best melee builds cannot compete with a even remotely decent gun build. And of course we still have um, our akimbo stuff over here, but we have all the other pistol skills as well. Um, the pistol section under Gunslinger is probably the best section here um, by quite a bit. The skills are very good, they're very strong, they really amplify your um, pistol abilities. It's a good little section, I think it's probably the highlight of Fugitive. Everything else is kind of negligible and forgettable as far as I'm concerned. But yeah guys, that's Fugitive. So a lot of changes there, a lot of stuff moved. A lot of the good stuff has been moved, it really comes down to it. So, but it's okay. We learn, we adapt, we overcome, right? This is actually a good time gaming. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share if you like anything you saw today. And remember to always have a good time gaming.